Hi, this is session 7 of Apogee Edge course for beginners. In this video, we will learn about generating access token based on password grant type. Before we start, please subscribe our channel and keep learning. Okay, as we know, grant type is the mandatory field which we must pass with the request in order to generate access token. In session 3 of our course, we have discussed what is a grant type and what are all the most commonly used ones. In case if you haven't watched it, I would strongly recommend you to watch it before proceeding with this video session. For your convenience, I have provided the links in the description below. So, one of the most commonly used grant types are password grant type. In this session, we will generate access token based on password grant type. As you might have guessed already, we should pass username and password along with the grant type in order to generate access token. All right, let's flip to APG Edge UI and click EP proxies. And here we'll have all the available API proxies which we have created already. And if you could see, the AP proxy, AP proxy demo is the one which we have been developing in our course so far. So let's use the same AP proxy in this session as well. So click on this AP proxy. And if you could see, we have two uh, proxy endpoints here. So one is default and another one is OAuth 2. So OAuth 2 is the endpoint which we uh, use for uh, generating access tokens. But for now, uh, this endpoint is generating access token uh, based on client credentials grant type. So in this video, we'll see how to generate access token based on password grant type. So let's go ahead and make the necessary changes in both two proxy endpoints. So if you could see, we have a flow here to generate access token based on client credentials. In the same way, we'll have to add another flow to create or generate access token based on password grant type so that we'll not lose uh, this functionality in case if we want to test we can make use of uh, this flow as well that is why i'm not uh, changing in this flow so let's go ahead and create a new flow click on this plus icon provide the flow name so i'm going to name it as generate access token iphone password in the description you can give something like this this is the flow generate access token using password grant type and conditional type we are going to use path and book so let's click this and path i'm going to give as access underscore token underscore password so it has to be post so let's select post and with these changes let's add this flow so now we have added the flow in this flow, we'll have to attach what to policy. So let's go ahead and you know add what to policy. What to? I'm going to name this as OAuth iPhone version two iPhone generate access token iPhone password. So click add, this will add the OAuth 2 policy with the default properties. So as we know, we'll have to, uh, you know, change this operation. So as of now, it says verify access token, but now we are interested in creating or generating access token. So let's go ahead and change it to generate access token from verify access token. So we have changed it and we'll have to provide the grant types here 
So under supported grant type stack, include grant type and provide the grant type. So we are going to use password grant type. So let's give grant, grant type as password. And as you know, we'll have to say from where the grant type will come in the request. So let's go ahead and specify that. So we are going to pass grant type in query param. So let's give that request dot query param dot grant type grant underscore type. So along with this, we'll have to provide username and password tag as well. So let's go ahead and give that username. So I'm going to pass username in this field name, username. So same way for password as well. I'm going to pass password in this field from the request. All right, so that is the change we need in this policy as of now. So let's go ahead and add, attach this policy in our flow. So in the request section, add our flow. So in the request, add a step in order to attach that flow inside the name tag, provide the attack, provide the policy name which we want to attach here. Let's go ahead and copy the attack policy name. So we'll have to provide the name but since we have given name and display name are same, so I'm copying it from here, but keep in mind that we'll have to specify the name of the policy, not display name. So let's go ahead and provide the name. Now we have provided the name. So with all these changes, let's go ahead and you know, save it as a new revision so that we'll not lose our existing revision and functionalities okay new revision have saved so let's click new revision and deploy it in test environment okay now new revision is saved and deployed let's we get to overview tab and get the endpoint URL. Just copy it, flip to Postman tool, try to invoke our endpoint. So our endpoint is now access underscore token underscore password and grant type is password. So the verb has to be post. So with these changes, let's go ahead and hit, hit the send button and let's see what happens. So it says 401 unauthorized. Let's go ahead and trace why we are getting this error. Let's start our traced session. And once trace is started, let's give the request again. Now our request should have been monitored inside the Apache Edge trace window. Let's click on the policy and it says client identifier is required. So this makes sense because we haven't provided the client ID and client secret ID. Because without the client ID and the client secret ID, Apache Edge will not be able to identify our uh, app. So we we'll love to provide it. And as we know, we can provide it by, you know, um, authorization editor or as from URL encoded here. So authorization editor is the recommended one by Apache Edge. So I'm going to pass authorization editor here. authorization 
and the value for this is I'm going to copy it from the previous request so provide that request so now with these changes also along with this we'll have to pass username and password so by default apg edge will look for username and password from from url encoded so we'll have to provide username and password here so let's give username so this is the field name which we have given in the policy so we'll have to give the username what we have mentioned in the policy inside the username property or tag so let's go ahead and navigate here so username we have specified this field name so we we'll love to provide the same field here in order to pass the username so we we'll love to pass our username so which is our apg edge account username and password so i'm providing my account username which is vnd clone at gmail.com so we'll have to provide password as well with these changes let's go ahead and send the request let's see what happens so we are getting the response from apgh but we are we are not getting all the properties that is because we have minimized our response in our previous video session so let's Go ahead and disable that since we we want to see all the response for a password grant type. So let's go ahead and disable that. So this is the one which is minimizing our APG policy response. So I'm going to disable this policy as of now because this policy is attached in our post flow of our endpoint. So I'm going to disable this. So save it. Now we should be able to see all other details. So let's give the another request to Happy GH to generate access token using password grant type. Here we go. We are getting all other fields from Happy G Edge. So it is access token, refresh token, refresh token issued at, you know, expiration, refresh count, status. All these properties are, all these properties we are getting. And we can uh, set the timeout for access token and refresh token, which we'll discuss in our next video. Also, in our next video, we'll discuss how to pass username and password in the body section. For now, we are passing it from the form URL encoder, but how to send it in the body section as this, as like this. Username, password, and grant type, and how to extract these values within the happy G edge. And, you know, in order to generate access token. So, all this we'll discuss in our next video session. That's it in this video. Thanks for listening and have a good day.